Hello YouTube and welcome back. In this video what we're going to be talking about is port matching. But hold on. There's more. Yes, right. I to give you a little follow up on what's going on. But if you're bored and you're just like, oh, I'm so bummed this video is not really long enough. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what do we have going on? We've got some stuff going on in the background. Yes. So if you've been seeing Danny like wandering out of the background of this video and wondering what the heck he's been up to, uh, what are you doing over here, Danny? Well, port matching. And it's a, it's a video on port matching and how important port matching is. Ooh. So yes. It's gonna and be that, <gasps> This is like coming full circle because that's something I've done quite a bit on uh, on my Supra. So yes, <gasps> so just just a, a simple video, and, and lately my simple videos have um, really been really important, or not important, beep. But everybody likes them, so <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. Hey, sometimes the simple stuff is the best stuff, and it looks like you've been playing with cats too. Yes. Someone might have taught me how to polish. We've been today. playing with the same cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as a great intro, we're going to be talking about port matching. So port matching, this is a brand new French flathead. And what's important on it, I need to bring you in closer. I'm going to show you um, why we should port match. And is it important? Does it make a difference? Um, in some instances, yes. In some instances, no. Let's get you in a little closer and show you what we're talking about. This all right, so when it's a brand new block, this is a brand new for French flathead. And why is it important to port match? Here we have the gasket, and I've already matched this gasket up to the intake manifold. So I need to put it on the right way. But let me bring you in closer here, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of times I don't even like to touch a manifold especially after it's been polished, but I will have to just redo it. Anyways, this is a brand new manifold, and the very first thing we did in this manifold, and, all right, so here's the manifold that's gonna go on this engine. And the very first thing I did is matched up, here's the gasket we're gonna run, and I matched up the ports in them on the manifold. So they're laid this over and it's a real simple, just scribing the lines and making sure that you don't have any aluminum that's on the inside. When you're port matching, the intake, um, as it comes downstream, um, can be and should be um, a little bit smaller than the cylinder head. In this particular instance, the block, it's a French flathead. But this example could be on anything, small block Chevy, small block Ford. So um, as the air is going down, make sure as you do your transitions, um, the next size is either identical or slightly bigger. Not gonna hurt anything. A lot of times we make it slightly bigger for anti-reversion. I'll draw that on the wall and we can see what I'm talking about. But as you can tell, now this is matched up perfectly to this gasket. So now I can use my gasket and put this aside so that we don't touch this bad dog anymore. Or any less. So now we're gonna lay our gasket here. Make sure we lay it the right way. And once again, let me bring you in closer and see if how close I can get it. I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm gonna scribe the lines, but since this, I went ahead and sprayed it down with some blue, Dykeman's blue beforehand so that I could scribe my lines so it makes it difficult to see. I'm gonna go and scribe my line so that you can see what I'm talking about. And I don't really know if it's doing it justice. I need more lighting maybe. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. So let me get out of my own light way. And I'm not calling anybody away, so please bear with me. I'm going to describe the lines, but can you see? There's a quarter inch of port right there. Um, let me see if I can get a better. I might clean the blue off just so that you can see it. Hold on a second. Okay, here you can see the ports. And we've already port matched the intake manifold. Look at that. I'll move it around so you can see how nice and tight that is. Stop it, people. Stop it. 
All right, there's the manifold. So what do we want to do? We want to go ahead and put this down on the engine. One of the beauties of a flathead Ford is that it has dowel pins. So it's real easy to get the alignment back up again. On a Chevy Ford V8 or anything we're doing in the high end, I'll actually mock up the intake manifold, the heads with the correct gasket and drill holes in the cylinder head. So we won't, we'll get there if you wanna know, let me know and we'll get there. This is what I wanna show you. Why is it important to port match? If nothing else, can you see that? See all that? The alignment wasn't the best. Some are right on the money. Some, not so much. Some pretty close. Some, not at all. Actually, there's quite a bit there. There you go. So, that's the importance of port matching. Um, yes, we're trying to enhance po power and enhance airflow, but just the, bit, the basic getting the air into the port. This was an industrial block. This was a Ford, uh, it's a French flathead. So it was made for fire trucks and water pumps. So that's why we want to port match. Can't go over it enough. Or maybe I went over it too much. Okay, today we're talking about port matching. We're not talking about porting. There's a difference. In port matching, I'm just letting the, the intake manifold and the cylinder head, in this particular instance, it's the flathead forward. So it's the intake manifold and the block. But we're just matching them. In porting, you're gonna take the port all the way down. And let me just explain. Here's the airflow intake manifold it could be a cylinder head in this instance it's a flathead ford and what we don't want is we don't want this air does not like to hit those spots there and just cause a bunch of turbulence in there and that's going to slow our airspeed down with a flathead ford we don't want to do that at all on a flathead ford but any vehicle you wouldn't want to do it if you're going to have and the port is bigger that's okay. A lot of times we'll even do this and we're doing this in a race application for anti-reversion. Every time that the air is going down the port, it actually goes back and forth. People don't realize it can go up to four feet out the pipe and come back into the combustion chamber every single time that we have a revolution and we have a compression. So the pulse is gonna keep moving, but every time it's gonna be moving as it goes down. So this would be anti-reversion as it tries to go back up into the port, back up into the combustion chamber, it will actually hit, this is if it's exhaust. If it's intake, it'd be back up into the intake manifold. It will hit these little lips here and that's okay. That's not only okay, it's good in some instances, instances as opposed to this. We don't want air hitting here. We don't want anti-reversion trying to get in we want it to not be able to come back into the intake manifold. Here we want it out of the intake manifold. So port matching is we're gonna, in general, if we can, a half inch down, and we're gonna taper that to match the port. That's all we're doing. We're port matching. So we're gonna get rid of this little spot that's in the way, like I said, about a half inch down, and then blend it. That's a port matching. If we were porting, we would actually open it all the way up and make it the same size. Um, there's an arc to the size of the port. We don't want the port to be too big. We want the port, actually a smaller port will enhance airspeed because it chokes it down and speeds it up. There's a whole art on porting and this isn't that. I wanted to just tell you what's the difference in port matching and then porting. Porting is all the way out. So in port matching, general rule of thumb, half inch, also a general rule of thumb, this is good getting into, into porting. If you're gonna change anything, let's get rid of this. Just a little tip of the day in general rule of thumb. Okay, here is a turn. Air does not like to turn. Air likes to go straight. So when air is coming in, what's it gonna do? It's gonna smash and hit this back wall. 
because it doesn't like to turn. And right here, it's going to cause turbulence in there because air is going to go slam this back wall, come in here, and then want to straighten back out down here. But around this turn, air doesn't, it's not going to hug this wall right here. It's going to slam this wall and it's not going to hug right here. So everybody wants to get in there and really butcher the short term. What I tell everybody is stay off the floor. Stay off the floor. Air is going to come in and hit the top wall and go down. So anytime the air turns, think about it, it's hitting the top. If you want to enhance it, work this here. Do not X, do not work the short turn. Anytime that you're messing with air, leave the short turn alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. You're probably, unless you start getting into, you have an airflow, you have a, a flow bench, and you're really getting into, um, really into the engine and you're understanding it, you can start manipulating shapes and ports. Do not try to redesign a cylinder head. Just try to enhance it. Try to port. Match it. Um, if you're going to port it, stay off the floor. Need to get a t-shirt. Stay off the floor. No good is going to happen here. What, what do we want? If we're going to do a turn, we want at least a half inch before we start to manipulate the short turn at all. Here's a seat on a head, and as air is turning, let's say it's going this way, it's upside down now, and I'm talking about a small block Chevy as opposed to a flathead. Until you got a half inch here, until you got a half inch here, leave this alone. Once you got a half inch here, then you can start working the short turn. It's a short turn world They're right there. Everything is right here. Stay off the floor. Do I have enough markers on my wall? Stay off the floor. We're doing port matching. We're not porting. Porting is when you're enlarging everything. You do a turn, work the, the big side, not the short end. I don't know. Let's get back to our flathead over here. There we are. We're back to our flathead. Let's go ahead and port match this. I'm going to show you. We're just going to go down about a half inch and we're going to blend it. We're not going to sit there and enlarge the whole port. The sides that are bigger, because it, this backside here, it is bigger on this backside. The port was moved. We can't do anything about that. That's the short turn anyway. On a flathead forward, the short turn is upside down. This is the short turn. That's the back wall in the back. So we can work that. That's going to help our airflow, not here. So we're going to stay off the, the, the back end anyway. It's bigger. What did I say? Bigger is always better on the entry level. So the port can be bigger than the manifold. We don't want the manifold bigger than the port, which is what we have here. All right, let me go ahead and move these walls back. And if anything, these ports here can be slightly larger. So once I scribe these lines, which I've done, I am going to grind to the line and get rid of the line. Just slightly get rid of the line. When I port matched the manifold here, I scribed my line and I stayed on the inside of the line. So as air is flowing on one, stay inside the line, one, stay outside the line. You're not going to have a problem. Um, you can spend hours and hours and hours making it perfect. And if you can, go for it. This has dowel pins. I love that. Like I said, we'll actually drill holes in the intake manifold on the cylinder head to get our alignment. We'll, we'll take the engine back apart again. I'll put two little drill bits in my gasket. That's a whole other thing on porting and tips on porting. Okay, so we're back here. Let's go over what we've learned or what I hope we've learned in port matching. We're not porting. There's two different things, port matching and porting. Port matching, we're just making sure that the air is not going to hit a wall. So we're just going in about a half inch down into the port and we're blending it. So that's what port matching is. That's going to give you a big bang for the buck, especially if we have something like this. Way big bang for the buck. If it's slightly off, it ain't going to make much difference. But Let's make sure that as air moves, the part that it goes into can be slightly larger. Like I said, in some race applications, we'll actually make it larger, especially on the exhaust side for anti-reversion. We're not getting into porting. If you want to see a video on porting, there's plenty of guys doing videos on porting, but I wouldn't mind doing one myself. That's not what we're doing. Port matching, which is something you can do at home. You can take a stone on a drill, um, anything to move this wall back. All right, a little tip of the day is don't worry about polishing the ports. Remember back in the day, port and polish um, sounded good. You spent a lot of time and really got those ports really good and polished. Only thing you want polished is the 
stop it i've heard some of y'all there is the exhaust port if you're going to polish a port uh, polish the exhaust port it keeps the uh, um it enhances or not enhances it enhances airflow stops carbon from building up on the port so the exhaust side polish it all you want to your heart's intent it looks real pretty and everything and it could actually help you the intake port no in fact it actually makes it worse we want a rough finish. I know back in the day, you saw all the magazine articles and everything had port and polishing. The intake manifold, especially if you're running fuel through it, like a carburetor, then what you want is a rough port. With a rough port, uh, the fuel mo molecules, the droplets will stick on the walls and as air is coming through it, it'll actually draw them off the wall and you'll get a bunch of little droplets and molecules of air and fuel mixed together, which is great. A smooth polish intake port, um, the fuel would actually just hit it and slide and revert fuel back from an air fuel mixture from the venturi back into a liquid again and it'll actually just turn into streams of fuel running down the port if you ever took a manifold apart that's real polished really good with a lot of fuel you'll actually see all the fuel ran down the port and you'll see a line a stream where the fuel is running like a river so air intake port carburetor rough leave it rough i you can leave it real rough there's a lot of people doing dimples in their ports that's for enhanced airflow but rough on the intake port the exhaust ports can be polished don't spend a lot of time polishing unless you just really like polishing um all right that's the tip of the day you don't need to be polished on the intake port just the exhaust if anything um tip of the day port matching will enhance a vehicle especially when they're this far off and that's all you're trying to do. You're trying to not take away from the build. Um, you want to build the best engine you can. Now you can go above it and start doing porting and get extra airflow. Unless you know what you're doing and you have a flow bench, leave that alone because you're probably going to slow your airspeed down. Nobody wants a big dead hole. All right, so that's my tip of the day. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been entertaining, educational, and a little bit enlightening on port matching. All right. I better get to port matching. I'll put some videos in the earlier part of this video of when I match these ports. For me, I'm out of here and I'm done. We'll see you on the next one.